ladies and gentlemen, we are live from the Isle of Man in the UK. This is John and Mike's MMA Corner. Eric Anders, Valor Fight. It's going to be live. Let me get this out of the way first. It's going to be live on Flow Combat. I always forget to put this at the very start, but it's on Flow Combat. So if you want to watch this card before we can get started, join Flow Combat and subscribe. Anyway, Valor Fight. You're taking on Jesse Grun. Uh, man, you're at the gym, obviously getting ready to prep. Let's just yeah. go straight into it, man. You got this fight against Jesse. Things for you are going well. How how was your training camp? How do you feel like everything's going for you mentally anyway right now? Uh, everything's going great. You know, I really don't do training camps. You know, I train all day, every day. Mm. Uh, no matter if I have a fight. Yeah. Four months from now, a week from now, whatever. Uh, I'm in the gym every day, uh, working to improve. Uh, my skill set, my conditioning, cardio, uh, everything. You know, I, I, we really don't believe in camps around here. Yeah. Um, you know, I, I feel like camps are for uh, for lazy people. You know, mm. oh, man, I, I got some time off. Let me go. Me. You know, it's cool to take vacation every now and again, man. It's, it's cool. You me. know, everybody needs a break every now and again. <laughs> but uh, to not do anything for two, three, four months, yeah. you know, before you're in between fights, is, you know, to me, it's a little ridiculous, especially yeah. uh, somebody like me, this is what I do for a living. I mm -hmm. coach, I train, uh, and I fight. Um, I, I, was so I, say, I take my profession very seriously. Well, I, I think the way the sport is now, it is going that way. You know, training, I say train every day. You don't go 100, you can't go 100 miles per hour every day. No, your you body can't. breaks down. But you can still train every day. You can do a sure. lot of technical stuff where it's just, repetitive drilling that people think that when someone says I like, train seven days a week a lot of people think oh, how do you do it and you're like well I'm not yeah. going I'm not going sparring every day yeah, you know? exactly. it's, it's it is it's it's listening to your body is key that's a big part that people don't you know I, I, I was uh, I was training the other night and one lad who had a niggle of his knee came back did some wrestling and jerked his knee again and I was like well your knee wasn't healed beforehand did you tell yeah. the, did you tell the guys prior that your knee's still not right maybe do a bit of light stuff technical stuff no I didn't well there uh, you go what are you asking for now let's talk about you though with your fighting okay so Jesse run you're taking on him now if I believe right you've got a bit of power in your hand sir uh, yeah, I'm a, a, a little bit, a little bit. A little TNT in these things, you know. <laughs> uh, for, I'll watch a bit of footage, you see. So I, I've watched it. I've watched it bang a bit. Is that something then that just you, you develop from technique with your striking, or or you like? There's some people who have just got good power in their hands. Right? There's some people who have just got it. You know, like look, Mark Henry. I know he weighs like 260, 80 pounds and can fight yeah. He doesn't throw far to throw hard. He just quick and it's there. It's powerful. Is that sure. you? Is that you, or you? Or did you just drill a lot of technique to get, to get um, the punching right? I, th I think there's uh, some natural explosion. Mm. Uh, a lot of fast, I have, you know, uh, a lot of fast twitch uh, yeah. muscle. Uh, but at the same time, technique trumps everything. And my mm. head coach Chris Conlon, we turned into working on my technique, uh, and so uh, I, I feel like I'm naturally powerful. Yeah, but. Uh, now, uh, you know, Chris has uh, certainly got my technique down, so now there's even more power yeah. on every punch. So, you know, I'm definitely excited to get in there and showcase that. Well, I was going to say, the fluidity gives you the power, because a lot of people think sure. that when, when you throw hard, you have to really force it, and I think a lot of people don't realize you've got to be, you've got to be relaxed. It's snap. Yeah, it's, uh, it's crazy, you know, isn't it? Early on in my career, you know, I was uh, really, like, herky-jerky, like, lumbering yeah. around. And was still able to, you know, get some KO mm. victories. Um, but now it's just, you know, a whole nother level. Yeah. Uh, with power. And, and, you know, I'm not, I'm not saying I'm, uh, you know, I guess Johnny Hendricks was on a knockout spree uh, for a while. I'm not saying, saying anything like that. But, uh, you know, I, 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 I think I have to definitely have the capability to one punch. Uh, you know, get some one punch KOs. So, so Mark, Mark, uh, Mark Hunt type <laughs> stuff, you know. Just walk away. Just walk yeah, away. <laughs> well, let's, I tell you, it takes a lot of balls to walk away, <laughs> just in case. <laughs> oh, yeah. Man, what, there was a dude on the Ultimate Fighter, man. He was on there twice and dropped the dude, walked away. <laughs> but the dude Luke was Barnett. out and then got up and it was won. Luke, I was just yeah. like, oh, you did it twice. Yeah, Luke Barnett did it. It was Luke Barnett. He fought Andrew Craig in <laughs> UFC London on the Alexander Gustavs and Jimmy Manoa card. 
yeah. and, and he dropped him twice or more. The reason why I know that, oh, was Andrew Quick? Was Andrew? Oh, was it Manchester card in the mark? It could be the Manchester card. I was at the, I was at the event. I was watching it. Saw Luke uh, before the fight. Watched it, and I saw him afterwards. And I was like, "What were you doing?" <laughs> and he went, "Man, I was sure he was out. I was sure he was out." <laughs> man, listen. If I drop somebody, I'm jumping on top. Yeah. And I'm gonna make sure that they're out of there because I'm not going. They're not gonna make a fool out of me. Nah, nah. Don't take that risk. Let make sure the referee pulls you nah. off, man. Uh, you said before that you coach. Uh, is there a specific martial art that you coach then? Is it what? What does it you do then? What's uh, uh, well, right now we're getting ready to start kids' class here in a little bit. Uh, today's a striking day, so uh, when I say striking, we incorporate boxing, kickboxing, and Muay Thai into one class. So we'll work a lot of uh, punches and kicks, as, along with uh, clinch work, which I think uh, the clinch is the most neglected area of training yeah. uh, in mixed martial arts. It's huge because. And yeah, you're right. Yeah. Clinch work, if you're not against the cage, is great. But then again, when you're against the cage, cage work incorporates clinch work. It's huge. Absolutely. Alan Absolutely. Joban showed that. Alan Joban, when he finished Richard Walsh with that clinch, come up over, followed the shoulder line, came over with this elbow, puts him yeah. to sleep. Beautiful. Uh, you know, you you can uh, you can negate the wrestler mm. uh, with the tie clinch, really beat up their body with knees. They can't get into your legs. Mm -hmm. uh, if someone has better striking than you, you can kind of close that distance and keep them at bay. Yeah. Uh, and you can also strike from the clinch, work takedowns from the clinch. Um, and that tie that tie clinch is especially dangerous mm. uh, when somebody knows how to use it. So trips. Uh, yeah. we, we we work all of that. Oh, nice. So so how did you get to the coaching side of things? Is it just You've been doing the martial arts for so long that you end up just falling into the coaching side. How did that come about? Uh, well, man, I, you know, I've, I've been in love with the sport uh, uh, forever. Um, and like I said, it's something I take seriously. And just before I turned pro, um, a unique situation at the gym came about where uh, he needed somebody to, you know, another employee to help coach. Because all of the fighters here uh, pretty much work here full time. You know, we got about six or seven guys that, that work at the gym full time, uh, whether it be coaching, teaching, uh, cleaning, yeah. um, getting people to sign up. Uh, so everybody here is, is a real martial arts. We don't have day jobs. You know, we are completely immersed uh, in mixed martial arts. Nice. Uh, you know, for at least 12 hours a day, I'm in, I'm in the gym. So even if, you know, even if I'm teaching, uh, that's a mental rep for me. If I show somebody how to do something, uh, that's an extra rep for me. Yeah. Uh, so that, that's another reason why I jumped on the opportunity. Is I can fully immerse myself uh, in mixed martial arts and have to think about nothing else. I don't have to answer phones. I don't have to get up under a car and change oil. I don't have to get on the roof and shoot my house. I don't have to do anything yeah. uh, other than train. Stay yeah. Stay healthy and train. Your focus. Well, uh, I've had it where yeah, I got injured. I've been injured in the past and it, it, I ended up still going to lessons just because I can sure. watch and you can learn. You learn, like, you might have picked up a niggle. You still go there. You watch the boys roll and you'll see, sure. you see so much more sometimes than when you're actually yeah, you, in there. And it's the, picked yeah, up. The people in the gate uh, neglect the, the mental aspect mm -hmm. of mixed martial arts as well. Yeah. You know, they, uh, they just go in there and kind of bang it out. Yeah. Um, I'd prefer to go in there and kind of play chess. I don't have to go in there and, you know, bum rush somebody and, you know, that like Vitor Belfort comes in there with, you know, six, the seven machine punches. Gun. And, yeah, I don't, I don't have to do all that. You know, you kind of sit back, uh, yeah. play chess a little bit, mm -hmm. uh, see what they're giving you, find your openings, and then you can take advantage and capitalize. Yeah. Uh, so, you know, that's all I do is mix martial arts. It's, so, look, it's early days in your pro career. It's early days. How are you gonna? How do you feel so far with the transition then to the pro game from your amateur? Scene? Are you happy with the transition yourself? Obviously, every day's oh, yeah. a learning curve. But are you happy so far yeah. the way it's gone? Yeah, absolutely. You know, I, I didn't even start mixed martial arts till I was 24, uh, and I'm 29 now. So the last four or five years, you know, it's been a steep learning curve, mm -hmm. uh, and I know that. Um, and like I was saying earlier, I may be more of a natural athlete for the people that I fight. Yeah. But at the same time, like early on in my amateur career, that's the only way I was winning. Mm. Uh, was just power, muscling people. 
Uh, and if you watch my first amateur fight all the way through uh, this last professional fight, you'll see a totally different uh, style of fighting, a more calculated style. Yeah. Um, you know, you'll just see the, the evolution of my game. I, um, yeah, I did. I, I, I can sure. vouch. I can vouch for that. I watched, I, I, especially, you, you, you're very calm when you're in there. Obviously, you're, you're, you're sure. mentally assessing the whole situation. You're very calm. You're not wasting shots. You're very, you're picking and choosing when you're throwing your strikes as well. So you, you're, you're managing your, your energy levels as well. So you're not just blowing out, punching thin air. Sure. You know, and that's a big key. You know, a lot of people don't realize how exhausting it is punching nothing. Yeah, like, no. It's horrible. <laughs> it's like, it's like, man, uh, I saw a statistic uh, not too long ago that said it takes like twice as much energy to punch in this uh, than it does to, you know, punch or kick yeah. uh, and actually hit your intended target. So I was like, well, oh, man, these five minute rounds are no <laughs> joke. So and eventually there'll be five five minute rounds. So, yeah. Uh, I kind of start working the gears in my head a little bit. Um, I also do a lot of visualization. Yes. Uh, you know, I kind of, you know, find a, a quiet space to mm -hmm. myself. Uh, just kind of close my eyes. Almost meditation. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I, I watch my opponent fight, see their style, see kind of what they like to do. And I envision myself uh, in every situation possible that can occur in, in, mm -hmm. in, in a fight. Yeah. Uh, whether, it may be, uh, whether it be uh, him getting a takedown and me on my back with him on top, mm -hmm. my back against the cage in the open cage, uh, so no matter what situation I'm in, uh, when fight time comes, I've already been there in yeah. my, you know, mentally, um, and so there's, there is no panic, there is no, oh my god, what do I do, it's, ah, right, man, you know, we've been here before. It works, it works, uh, so, I agree. You know, you know, feet in the hips, grab the hands, mm -hmm. build the frame, uh, work your way back to your feet, work for a sweep, submission, uh, so... You know, I'm, I'm oh, very, I am uh, with you. It works, mate. That's one of my, for sure. I think that's one of my biggest advantages going into a fight. Uh, I think the people only uh, when they see me, they look at the the physicality. Mm. He's big for an eighty five, or nah. he's strong for an eighty five, <laughs> uh, which you know, which is probably true. Uh, but at the same time, you know, I'm, I'm very mentally prepared uh, along with the physical. Mm. So I think that I have the advantage going into any fight. Uh, that I have. We the mental side of the game, it it's huge. The weapon that the mind is, it's probably the most powerful weapon because if you're not there, Absolutely. like Donald Cerrone is a great example. Like everyone knows how good that guy is. But when he's not mentally on point, he is just like a normal guy. He's like an average fighter. Yeah. He's not anyone special. Yeah, exactly. And he's probably the best one I can really pick at because you can see fights where he's mentally went and there's fights where he's on point and it's two different guys. And it's, sure. it's huge, you know, I admit, I've had sports psychologists on here, well, I see sports psychologists, like a mind sport consultant, he, sure. he helps people with the mental side of the game to, to get that on point, and I tell you what, the stuff that he's talked to me off air about, the stuff we've done, it is absolutely astonishing how much of a weapon your mind can be, and how much of a difference sure. it makes, just in training alone. Uh, so for yourself then, do you find then, like, teaching the kids that you're going to do, it's, you know, that, that you're giving back, do you feel like that just helps build your character in the cage as well. You know, the fact that you're sure. Like it's a complete circle of martial arts in your life. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yeah. I got two kids, a five and a seven year old. They train. Uh, so we wrestle around at the house literally 24 hours a day. I do nothing but martial arts. They kick your ass. Uh, man, they're, they're getting there, man. They're getting there, man. My, uh, the oldest one, he, uh, you know, I think he's a, he's a natural grappler, man. He loves like his takedowns are pretty nasty for us. For a little kid, you know, yeah, um, like he's actually shooting singles and doubles and nice, you know, front headlocks and stuff. And I'm just like, man, well, you, you know, happy. usually kids, kids their age are like that head and arm, that hip toss. Yeah, that's about all they know. Uh, now my oldest son Israel, he uh, he gets it. You know, I think he's gonna have a really solid top game. And then uh, the five year old, he's you know a little bit more fatigued. Yeah, uh, so he's always on his back, so yeah. he don't have a nasty submission game yeah. uh, and offensive guard with the five. So. Uh -huh. Triangle uh, man, it, it, yeah, for sure. Sweeps. Uh, so it's going to be really interesting to see how they kind of, how their game kind of evolves as they get older as well. Yeah, that's cool, man. You've just got that kind of, uh, that family kind of mentality, the martial arts as well. It's beautiful. So that when you're at home, it's not, you're thinking about fighting, but it's an enjoyable side of things as well. Because sure. sometimes it can be a bit tiring training. You're just like, oh man, I'm just wrecked. 
I want five day oh, to yeah. hurry up. It happens. Yeah. We all hit it. We all get that mental yeah. breakdown. And it's just a nice way to do it. <laughs> Hello, uh, little they'll, one, they'll, whoever's they'll, there. They'll, they'll sneak me with the uh, rear naked, real quick. Yes. Like, it ain't nothing. I'm just like, hold on, little dude. Yeah. I got thrown over my shoulder. They got tiny little know. arms, and they get really, yeah. they get in there. They get in there. They got good, kids have got really good, strong grip, man. They don't realize yeah. how, so, how nasty know, it is. In, in the next 10 years or so, you know, they, they might, they might, uh, the king, but don't don't teach him don't teach him everything that's the key teach him yeah. teach him enough but not everything hey man look i know you've got a kid's can't, class can't teach you everything. hey i know you got a kid's class i'm not going to keep you forever i uh, we're good on time are we good on time all right cool yeah, i didn't want to yeah, i didn't want to obviously you know intrude too much look then let's let's quickly go so we're going to coaching side of things but the family side of things uh, and that's your life right now, what's your goals then? You, have you got goals that you just think each fight as it comes? What's what's your ultimate kind of, you know, vision with this? Uh, well, I set several different goals, like short-term, mid-term, yep. long-term. Uh, so the short-term goal right now is to go in there and get that victory. Yeah. Uh, next weekend, uh, mid-term, make it to the UFC, long-term, uh, you know, become the champ. Mm -hmm. uh, because in my opinion, if you get into something without... Uh, wanting to achieve the ultimate goal of whatever it is. Yeah. You know, if you start a business, the goal is to make a million. After you make a million, make two million. Mm -hmm. You know, boom, boom, boom. You know, just keep making yeah. money hand over fist. Yeah. Uh, so if you, if you know, if you kind of get into something half-heartedly, then those are the results you're going to get. You're you right. Know, and, uh, the ultimate goal, you know, is to be the best uh, fighter that I can be. Yeah. You know, uh, you know, at the end of the day, UFC, no UFC championship no championship uh if i can look in the mirror and say that uh i gave everything that i have you know, i trained as hard as i can i can i have no regrets then, you know then it is what it is and i'll be able to sleep easy at night that is the thing having a, having a personal goal and then having like a career goal they are two different sure. things absolutely and you've put yourself in the right position though to kind of get yourself in that career aspect training every, training every day you're in there coaching is that was that something that you thought about like is that in hindsight kind of thing you kind of thought if i want to be the best i'm gonna have to kind of do more than maybe like a couple of training sessions a week when you first started the career. Sure. was that yeah, like absolutely. a high, like a visual thing yeah like, well, even even before i worked here uh and i had another job yeah you know, i would still come in you know do my conditioning at like 5 5 30 in the morning mm. uh come in here roll around uh be go work you know, from eight to five, mm. to go home, change, uh, and then be right back in the gym till about ten o'clock at night, ten eleven at night. Mm. So uh, the only thing that's changed now is you know I get to take a nap in the middle of the day. Yeah. Uh, which I think that the rest is probably the biggest thing that I neglect mm. uh, in my training because one, I don't sleep much at all. You know, I probably sleep maybe three, four hours a night, uh, six if I'm lucky. Uh, so I'm just always like going, doing something, yeah. training, doing something to uh, master my craft. Uh, so uh, now I have a chance in the middle of the day. When there's really nothing going on in the gym. Uh, the gym is empty. Uh, go home, take a nap, come back. So I, I find my day is pretty much broken down into two days. Nice. In, one. Uh, in the morning, you know, I'll come in here, hit miss with coach, uh, roll uh, with some with the competition guys, uh, some of the other fighters. Teach class in the morning, uh, go home, take a nap, shower up, get something to eat, and then come back and do it all over again nice. uh, at night. Uh, Wednesday, today's Wednesday, so tonight's our big, big sparring night. Mm. Uh, you know, I'll probably get some Iron Man, probably do you know, a good 30 minutes every minute. You know, a fresh, you know, a fresh Sweet. guy comes in. So yeah, they're they're, they're gonna push you. Tonight, tonight's a rough one, man. We, <laughs> we don't kill each other, man. I don't want to no, 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 no. We push you. Get in here push you. Yeah. Try to murder each other. No. But, uh, at the same time, uh, I'm going to sleep well tonight. Yeah. I'm pretty exhausted <laughs> even out here. You know? No, it's when your head hits that pillow, it's it's like sweet surrender. Like, you just like, ah, oh, this is the best yeah. feeling in the world. Like, you can make love to that pillow. It feels so good. <laughs> yeah, man. I try, I try, man. But this is the thing, man. I get home. Uh, you know, the kids are, you know, asleep. I get home pretty late. Uh, so they're already asleep. So the house is quiet. Perfect sleeping conditions. I get to the bed and I'm just like, why can't I sleep? <laughs> <laughs> like, damn it. I just want to sleep. You know? Your mind, uh, you're I'm, I'm 
manage to fall asleep and I'll wake up, you know, three, four in the morning and just, you know, get on fight pass, watch old fights. Yeah. Uh, pride. Got a little bit of pride. Yeah, I uh, love pride, man. Yeah, I was watching uh, you the other night. That, that's when, you know, but they were a little reckless in pride, man. It's just yeah. like, man, I'm going to get you or you're going to get me. Yeah. I, th I, th I think the, the game has certainly evolved a lot since then. Oh, yeah. You guys are a little so more different. Calculated. Uh, but at the same time, I don't like decisions, man. I like to see guys get knocked down and submitted, man. And I yeah. like to do it myself. Yeah, yeah man, that's that's, that's, that, that's why I like Prime. And, you know, it was just it was so wild. And, and yeah. I kind of like that, the fact that there was not those limitations. There, there wasn't those people who were thinking about the decision game. You know, you you get yellow cards for delaying and stuff like that. I quite like, yeah. that's why I like I think that's why I like Pride. I think if they brought that in this day and age, I think it'd be cool as well. You know, like, hey, look, you're not interacting enough. Yellow not, card. Not to mention soccer kicks. I think soccer kicks, like, uh, you know, if you can just punch somebody's head off their yeah. shoulders when they're on off, I don't know. If this, yeah, those guys are tough, man. Those guys are tough. Oh, man, they yeah. They definitely have a screw loose, man. Oh, that's yeah. All, you know, I think Dan Henderson got booted in the face. Yeah. And that's why he That's why he doesn't have any teeth. I think it was Wanderlei Silva, maybe. Who, Gary, uh, Gary Goodridge. From all his fighting, yeah, <laughs> Gary Goodridge, he, he's got no scent, he hasn't got his sense of smell, I think it is now, from like, all the, uh, yeah, he's probably got, you know, all those bangs in the head, man, yeah, it's, it's nuts, but at the same time, it was, it was wild ass days, man, I love the cowboy kind of style, it was just a cocaine corral, man, it was, yeah. oh, it was awesome, man, I loved it, <laughs> that's it's, funny, my fight pass is, uh, yeah, it's a bit of pride, um, just I'm just like a list of pride. I'm just sitting there watching, man. That's pretty much my relationship is UFC Fight Pass. It's my girlfriend. Yeah. I just snuggle up with it at night. That's my color buddy. <laughs> I hear you. Oh man, it's awesome. Look, like I say, I'm gonna, I'm gonna let you shoot off. But before I let you go, I want everyone to know how to log in online to follow you. You must have some like Facebook page or Twitter or Instagram or something. What can people tune into, man? Yeah, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram. All the handles are the same. Eric Anders. E-R-Y-K-A-N-D-E-R-S. Uh, you can find me on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram. Uh, I, I don't do Snapchat. I don't have a Snapchat. Uh, no, you got. If, if, you can only do it if you're single if you've got Snapchat. Trust me. Uh, man, but you know, business owners and stuff use Snapchat and stuff, man. Uh, yeah, yeah, business, really like business, for business, yeah. Business. Yeah, yeah, for business. Yeah, we, 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 we just got one for the gym not too yeah. long ago, but... Uh, I'm married now. But yeah, before, don't don't do it. Uh, don't do it. I Snapchat. It, it, it wasn't for uh, business use. No, no, no. You'll get, you'll get a lot of dick pics sent. <laughs> <laughs> hey, man, look. What about, uh, look, sponsors? You got any people out there helping you out? Any little companies and stuff? Oh, yeah, absolutely. Uh, EW Motion Therapy is uh, one of my big, uh, big sponsors. Uh, TAP, Together Assisting People. Um... Obviously, the guys at the gym, everybody, uh, the members, the fighters, the coaches, you know, everybody contributes uh, to, to the W's in yeah. my working column. It's not just me. I am the one who goes in there and fights, but at the same time, uh, everybody else has a part in preparing, whether they sacrifice time. Yeah. Uh, the team. Know, they, they was in here beating me up or vice versa and whatnot. Um, members of the gym, you know, people holding pads, you know, you just can't, can't, you know. So, put a premium on that stuff. Where, where is the um, gym? Where is it? So if uh, someone's in the local area and Birmingham. they want to train, or they want their kid to train, where, whereabouts is it? Birmingham, Alabama. Uh, we're here in Homewood. Uh, Spartan Fitness. Uh, mixed Martial Arts Training. Uh, we don't, you don't have to be a fighter to train here. If you yeah. want to come here, get a good workout, release some stress, uh, you know, lose some weight, uh, we're here for you. Um, uh, Advanced Capture Technology uh, is another big one. Uh, Magic Box Conversation Club. Uh, I, I have you know a great support system around here, so good stuff. Uh, you know, there's a lot of love. I like that. Spread around. Now, last but not least, the thank yous. You know, the appreciations. I will give you a little hint. You might want to say thanks to the misses. Don't forget oh, to leave her out. <laughs> yeah, no, no doubt, no doubt. But she, uh, but in, in, in all honesty, like today's her birthday and I'm here in the gym. She gets it. You know, I was like, man, do you want me to, you know, I'll take, you know, obviously I can't miss sparring, but she was like, no, I get it. You have a fight coming up. She's mm -hmm. awesome. She doesn't give me a headache. Uh, as long as I only eat what she cooks, <laughs> I'll, uh, you know, I make weight. You yeah. Know? Uh, 85, you know, it, it can be a bit of a, a bit of a struggle to get down to 85. Um, but you know, she's all into fitness and stuff too. So, 
Oh, uh, nice, nice. She always, she's always cooking healthy stuff. Uh, always doing research on the kind of foods that I should be eating and whatnot. <laughs> so all I do is show up, eat, you know. She makes, nice. she makes my life really easy. Awesome. Like she can see, man, I, I, I can't say enough, man. She'll, uh, she'll see that I'm tired and just, you know, tell me to go to bed. No conversation. <laughs> just, uh, go ahead and just, you know. Eat and take a bath, take a shower, and I just, you know, there's just not a whole lot of women out there that understand, you know, what uh, what the fight game what, now. What, what it, what, yeah, what I'm trying yeah. to do here, you know. They don't get uh, it. So, uh, my head coach Chris Conley, all my training partners Matt Elkins, uh, Omar Johnson, Ethan Olasano, uh, uh, Chef Sugar Bear Dansby. Uh, man, I have a whole slew of training partners that help get me prepared for each and every single fight. Uh, and kind of keep me motivated. Awesome. Uh, we're a close knit family here, so uh, all the members here at Sparring Fitness uh, really is a family atmosphere in here. Fantastic, man! That's great. Every, 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 yeah. And no one here is selfish. Everybody has everybody else's best interest in hand, and uh, we're all looking to improve and you know take over the world. So, uh, oh, man, honestly, it's an awesome atmosphere. Sounds like you've got a great kind of network, and that's key. It's absolutely huge. People don't get like you say you're not the. When you're in there, you're not alone. It sounds weird. You're not alone. It's it's a it's sure. a whole network. Uh, like I said before, flow combat. Jump on people uh, to subscribe, and you can watch the fights. Hey, thank you very much for your time, man. Honestly, appreciate it. It's thank been a you. pleasure. Have a great fight. Have a great weekend, and just have a great fight camp as well. The end. The end to your fight camp. Enjoy sparring sure. tonight. <laughs> uh, yeah, no, it'll it'll be fun. It'll be fun. I, I really enjoy the struggle of. Uh, Mixed martial art, um, you know, kind of helps you in life, man. If you can get through this, through these Iron Man rounds, if you can do jujitsu and be comfortable being uncomfortable, and there's really no situation outside the gym that uh, yeah. won't be too big for you to overcome. So, Bingo. Uh, jiu-jitsu uh, and mixed martial arts certainly proves that. Mm -hmm. uh, anybody who does it, man, there's, there's, there's hardly any, you know, no one's really an asshole who does uh, mixed martial There's a few. Is there, is there, is there like know, a tiny but, percent? You get it with everything, but there's a... It's a yeah, tiny, sure. tiny uh, amount. For, 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 the, for the most part, everybody's cool because they know. It's, it's, it's so humbling. Mm. Uh, uh, mixed martial arts is and jiu-jitsu and boxing or whatnot. Because yeah. you think, you know, you're, you're the king of the hill. Then, you know, a little 17-year-old 17, 17 kid, kid comes and rolls you up. And you're like, oh, shit. Maybe, they, they mess you up, I man. Maybe I need to rethink this. So, <laughs> yeah. uh, uh, if, it was, if it was up to me, uh, if I was president, you know, obviously you can't force anybody to do anything, but... Uh, well, no. Obama yeah. says it's different, but, uh, man, I would recommend jujitsu, uh, to anybody. Yeah. To everybody. Everybody needs it. Eye opener. Huge eye opener. Look, man, get going coaching, get those kids working and improving the next generation of martial arts. I have a good, like I said, Absolutely. mate, thanks so much for your time, my friend. It's been a pleasure. Thank you. Cheers, Look buddy. Look forward to the next one. Have a good one. You too, bud. Bye.